Welcome to my CEH version 9 review guide. Here we're looking at questions 31 through 35. So when we're looking at different types of things, make sure you understand the difference between a dictionary attack and a brute force attack. Again, a dictionary attack is going to pull the data from a word list, where a brute force attack will try different combinations. A brute force attack, you may say eight characters and then you'll put in the criteria of uppercase, lowercase, special characters, and numbers, and it will just try different combinations, and just try one password after another after another that it generates, not pulling from a dictionary, where again, that dictionary pulled, uh, pulls it from a word list. And you can find these word lists online. You can do dictionary attack plus word list, and you can find these massive large word uh, lists that have millions of possible passwords for you to try them. So what type of injection attack is based off of a uh, true-false response? And if we're looking at injection attack, that's going to be a blind SQLI injection attack. Again, because its response is based off of that true-or-false, it's part of that blind SQLI. That was one that I wanted to make sure that we, we talked about because a lot of people don't have a database background, so looking at the SQL structure and SQL injections, we kind of just kind of skim over, and that's really it. But you need to make sure that you understand injection attacks based off of true, uh, true and false, blind SQLI. That was one that kept popping up in our exam questions that people kept missing, so... I made sure that we talked about it. Filter commands. There are different ways to filter these. In Wireshark, if you're doing some type of uh, filtering based off of a port number, you can uh, display filter TCP dot port either EQ and the port number or equals port number or equals equals. And the example I have, if we want to filter uh, HTTP traffic, we can actually do tcp.port equals 80, and that will filter, so only port 80 traffic will be there. Securing VPN, and how we secure communication between different nodes. If we're talking securing VPN, uh, the two major ones are going to be like IPsec and PPP, or point-to-point -point protocol. Point-to-point -point protocol uses things like PAP and MSCHAP, or CHAP, and those are all really plain text encryptions, where IPsec is the new age IP security, and if you ever see a question on securing communications or securing VPN, the answer is more than likely going to be the current IPsec standard because again PPP while it still may be in use it really is not one that you're going to be implementing from here moving forward and lastly when you see mass amounts of text and you're not quite sure what to, how to make out of it we're looking for key terms for example when I did my CEH and I had several students take their CEH one thing that they kept coming back with was, well, we got lots of data. We didn't know how to analyze it. So if we're looking at a mass output, and it says things like uh, transfer or XFR when to source, when to destination, when source, when destination, the, the key thing there is looking at FXR, and that means transfer. And being able to decode that lets us know that that typically means that's a DNS zone transfer. Because we've seen things like XFR, and we've seen things such as when a uh, to and location. Uh, when could be the date it starts, or when it completed. To and from could be the source and destination of the zone transfer. All right, those are five questions for today. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you. Have a great day.